Thank you. The final item of business is a member's business debate on motion 14677 in the name of Jackie Bailey on the Scottish Government to penalise Scots for living alone. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate, please press your request to speak buttons down. I call on Jackie, to op Jackie, ba Jackie, Jackie Bailey to open the debate. You can Ms. call Bailey. me Jackie any time you like, Too presiding officer. Too close to recess. <laughs> I'm drifting. I call Jackie officer. Bailey to open the debate. Ms Bailey, please. Thank you very much, presiding officer. Almost 950,000 people in Scotland receive a discount for their water. For the overwhelming majority, that discount is worth 25% of the total bill. That's a lot of money. For the average Band D house, that discount is worth £109 a year. Now, in the summer, the Scottish Government launched a consultation on changing the discount. And it is this which has so far received little attention from this chamber that is the focus of my members' debate this evening. And I am very happy to clarify at the start that this was a change suggested by the Scottish Government and not by Scottish Water. In a nutshell, the Scottish Government wants to increase the amount of water discount for those receiving council tax reduction. Now that is welcome and I have absolutely no problem with that at all. But they want to pay for it by taking away the council tax discount from half a million single people. This is nothing short of an attack on single older people. They may be living alone because they're widowed. They may have a small works pension that means that they don't qualify for council tax reduction. They will find it difficult to manage. This is an attack on single parents who struggle to manage bringing up children on one income. This is an attack on half a million people that rely on getting this discount, penalised simply because they live alone. There is an argument, in a second, there is an argument that someone living alone will use less water than a household of, say, four people. But there seems to be an assumption that people living alone have considerable resources as well. And nothing could be further from the truth. And indeed, the Fraser of Allender Institute noted that there are poor people in every council tax ban. Happy to give way to John Mason. John Mason. I thank the member for giving way. Would she accept that some of us who are single and live on our own would happily pay a bit extra money? Well, indeed, if you, wish to, if you wish to do so, I'm sure that Glasgow City Council would welcome you paying extra. But that isn't the point. That absolutely isn't the point. Because the majority of people in this category are on low and fixed incomes. Losing the discount could have serious consequences as they need to find more from an existing pot, a small pot, simply to stay afloat. Age Scotland, in a briefing for this debate, point out that in a recent survey, six out of 10 pensioners struggled with their fuel bills. Imagine how much more difficult the Scottish Government will make it if they remove the discount for water from older people too. And we know the number of older people is set to rise significantly over the next decade. And in particular, the number of older people living alone is expected to rise by nearly 50%. So has the Scottish Government in its wisdom, as part of its consultation, published an analysis of responses yet. Now, I was told that the final consultation report would be presented to a multi-stakeholder group on the 25th of October, and it would be published on their website thereafter. That, indeed, was from the Cabinet Secretary herself. But thereafter, somebody ran for cover. Despite emails to Scottish Water, PQs to the government, the report remained hidden away. Now I'm told, as a result of an FOI, that it will be published, wait for it, presiding officer, on Friday the 21st of December, when we have all gone home and no one is paying attention. That is, frankly, woeful and tells you everything you need to know about the cynicism of this government. Let me turn, let me turn to council tax reduction. There is a council tax reduction for single households. You get the water discount if you get the council tax discount. So members in the chamber will appreciate the concern that what we are now witnessing is the thin end of the wedge. Today it's the water discount they are after, tomorrow it will be your council tax discount. Welcome to the new Scotland where you are being penalised for living alone. And it is not far-fetched. A former SNP MSP, one Roderick Campbell, questioned whether the single person's council tax discount should remain at all. 
So when I put this to the First Minister, at uh, First Minister's questions a few weeks ago, I expected her to rule it out, but she didn't. Yeah. She didn't rule it out. She pointed to further consultation. And let's be clear about the cost of the removal of both single person's discounts for water and council tax. It will cost the average Bandy household, the average household, over £400 a year. That's an extra £400 people will need to find on a fixed income at a time when the price of absolutely everything is going up, but earnings are either flat or declining in real terms for the majority of the population. Now, as I said at the start, providing more assistance for those on council tax reduction is absolutely welcome, but how you pay for it is the issue at stake. And I do not believe that taking from the slightly less poor to pay for the poorest is the right way to do it. I cannot begin to understand why the Cabinet Secretary appears to be hell-bent on making changes that will leave substantial numbers of people in Scotland poorer than they are today. So let me genuinely ask her to think again. Let me ask her if she's considered if there's a way of protecting single-person pensioner households. What discussions has she had with, for example, the Social Security Minister? Now that the Scottish Government has new powers, has she thought imaginatively about how these could be used to help those on low incomes with water charges? And will she meet with age concern and directly include pensioners in a discussion about this very policy which will affect their income going forward? I hope, I genuinely hope, we can persuade the Cabinet Secretary, who is politically astute, not to rush into this. Let's work together to ensure that you are not penalised if you happen to live alone in Scotland today. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you very much, Ms Bailey. Uh, open debate, speeches are four minutes. I call James Dornan to be followed by Finlay Carson. Mr Dornan, please. Um, thank you very much, President Officer. As is normal, I would uh, like to thank Jackie Bailey for securing today's debate. However, I'm deeply disappointed with the tone of her motion, and I'm also surprised that it was allowed in the first place. This motion is, is, is talked as if it was a formality and a proven fact that the Scottish Government are penalising Scots, when she knows this is clearly not the case. In this fantasy motion, Jackie Bailey has gone from they're going to lose the Scottish water rebate to they're going to lose their council tax rebate, when none of these things are factually accurate. And our record as a government has clearly shown that what we do is about making sure that people that, that, that we help, that we make sure that the help goes to those that they need it most. This is a government who takes the necessary action to protect those in lower incomes and supports the poorest people in our society. Whether it's through our commitment to tackle child poverty, feel, uh, only if it's not coming off my time. This time, Mr Dornan. Right, on you go. Mr. Johnson. I, I thank the member for giving way. I, I, I gather, based on his remarks, he's asking the Scottish Government to rule out removing the single person's discount for water. James Dornan. Sorry, I thought that Daniel had been here long enough to know the difference between a consultation and, and not a consultation. We're still in a consultation process. You look at the consultation results and then you make your decisions after. If you rule things out before a consultation starts, there's no point in having it in the first place. I thought you'd have known that by this time, Daniel. Whether we are protecting the poor through our commitment to tackle child poverty, for example, using our new social security powers to support young families and low incomes with a new Best Start grant, the first payments of which were made on Monday, or through our commitment to tackle funeral poverty, where we've unveiled a 10-point funeral cost plan to help those who face financial problems during the difficult time, or whether it's through our world-leading commitment to tackle period poverty. This government looks after those who need looked after. It's called being pro progressive, and I look around, and there's, there's maybe one or two of you, but maybe the Labour should give it a go. Some of the older ones there might have a distant memory of it, but I'll tell you, since I've come into this parliament, I've seen absolutely no sign of it, except for in press releases and speeches. Presiding officer, since Scottish Water's creation in 2002, we've seen continual improvements in the work they do. The collective focus and the need to improve the quality and standards of services, determination to keep charges affordable, and the commitment shown by our water industry has resulted in Scotland's drinking water quality, environmental performance, and levels of service reaching their highest levels ever. 
These are impressive achievements over a period in which average charges have fallen in real terms and remain among the lowest in the UK. And according to SPICE, the average annual household water charge in 2018-19 is £363 in Scotland, and this is over 20% cheaper than Labour-run Wales, where consumers will be charged £439 this year. And now, presiding officer, I look forward to Jackie Bailey's next motion, how the Welsh Government can learn from the Scottish Government about how to treat people fairly. However, I do not deny that significant challenges lie ahead and we have to plan carefully to address these and ensure that the progress made is maintained. We must continue to have a sustainable, high-performing water industry meeting customers' needs and at affordable price, preside, eh, prices. Presiding officer, as Jackie Bailey well knows, the process of determining charges for the period 21 to 27 is now underway and the Scottish Government does play a central role in determining the key policy parameters to guide that process and everyone was encouraged to submit their views on key issues central to the development of that framework. Views re received will be taken into account in the finalisation of these documents at a later stage of the review which will allow the Water Industry Commission to issue its final determination in March 2020 which will set out its views of charges for the regulatory period. It's just a shame that Jackie Bailey's views are not part of this consultation as she didn't bother to participate in it. And as set out by the First Minister in November, coincidentally in response to Jackie Bailey, there's absolutely no proposal to remove the single occupancy discount. The Scottish Government are indeed reviewing the responses to the consultation at the moment, but importantly, any detailed changes to charging policy would be subject to further consultation with customers and stakeholders. Any possible reduction in a discount, single, a discount for single person household would potentially allow increased discounts for those on low incomes to be introduced all the same. And this is a point which Citizens Advice Scotland actually welcomed. According to CAS, the proposal to increase the maximum reduction for recipients of the water charge reduction scheme from 25% to 50% will provide additional benefit to over 340,000 households and full the council should tax be concluding, reduction Ms. Bailey. and another 160,000 on personal council tax reduction. This sounds rather progressive to me. Again, I will reiterate, no decisions have been taken on the issue. But when the decision is taken, it will be about making sure that the help we provide goes to the people who need it most. It appears to me, presiding officer, that just as was done during the Better Together days, Labour continue to try and scare our most vulnerable to make political points. Uh, thank you, Mr Gordon. Uh, just, just for, uh, Mayor, please, just for clarification, you asked, you didn't know why the motion was allowed. Well, the process is, the motion was submitted to the chamber desk. The chamber desk ruled it was competent. That's the first thing, you all know that. Secondly, the Bureau agreed that this should be debated and the Bureau is unanimous and across all the parties. No, there's nothing, sit down, Mr. Dornan. Sit, well, tread carefully. It better be tread a carefully. point of order. Right. Okay, the point of order is, do we have any clarification about what the boundaries are for a Sit member Sit down, today? Mr Dornan. Sit down, Mr Dornan. Sit down. That is not a point of order. You asked why it was allowed. I've explained the parliamentary process. That is why this is being debated today. There is no conversation to be had. I thank you. Calm down. I now call Finlay Carson to be followed by James Kelly. Mr Carson, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I'd first like to say I've, uh, my speech uh, completely misjudged the tone of this debate. However, I'll, I will continue. Uh, I would like to thank Jackie Bailey for bringing this important subject to the Chamber this evening. As a member for the rural constituency of Galloway and Western Freesa, I'm acutely aware of my many rural constituents who are living alone, some through choice, but many not through choice. Age Scotland's briefing ahead of this debate highlighted how over the next 25 years the number of older people who are expected to live alone is expected to rise by 50% and they are the people that are going to be hit. That is one reason why the proposal by Scottish Water to reduce the single occupancy discount from 25 to 10% are misguided and need to be readdressed. It's beyond belief to suggest the single occupancy in vacant homes such as uh, use as much water as a fully occupied house and there is every reason to maintain these discounts given the people it's going to affect the most. However, it's not beyond belief that these proposals are nothing more than an attempt to increase council taxes by stealth on single occupancy homes and vacant properties. 
Council tax is already a progressive system and those with low incomes rightly receive discounts. This once again demonstrates that under this SNP government, hard-working taxpayers will pay more and get less. It will also hit rural users disproportionately. Not insignificantly because of another issue facing my constituency, that's connectivity, still a major issue throughout rural areas. Age Scotland have pointed out that many people simply do not have access to the information relating to applying for the benefits they're entitled to. For example, 40% of people eligible for pension credits are not claiming it. So it's a double whammy. You get extra costs but less accessibility to the information to assist you to get support. This morning I met with the Council for Voluntary Organisations on the subject of affordable broadband. And I just wonder how many MSP colleagues, let alone constituents, know that if, if they're in receipt of certain benefits, they can sign up for a £10 a month home, phone and broadband package from BT. Now that's an example, if you don't have connectivity, you can't actually find out what uh, uh, support you can get. So the importance of boosting our digital connectivity across rural communities cannot be understated. Bringing about improvements can not only open up further job opportunities and bring our communities closer together, helping to reduce social isolation, but in this ever more digitally driven world, we must ensure that everyone has access to the information that they need. Presiding officer, with what's gone before, I hope you and the mover of the motion will indulge me by going somewhat off a tangent, because when I initially read the motion, I thought it was about people living on their own and loneliness, which would have been very appropriate this time of year. So I was pleased to meet the Red Cross and the subject of loneliness and they provided me with a great insight into the effects of social isolation and feeling alone and it was highlighted in the report trapped in a bubble. The exact people that Scottish Water propose policy change will hit the most. And I met with the Social Security Secretary Jane Freeman asking what action could be taken to address social isolation and loneliness. It is disappointing that it's taken until this week to reveal the findings of their consultation when the consultation finished at the end of April. But in response, my colleague Annie Wells put forward wide-ranging plans to combat loneliness, including national awareness campaigns, and perhaps most importantly all, the recognition that the need uh, for loneliness uh, support affects people of all ages. Tonight, in the spirit of the season, which I presume this debate was going to be more involved with, I'd like to pay tribute to some of the organisations working tirelessly across Dumfries and Galloway to help those people living on their own. Well, I've been quite indulgent because you didn't read the motion properly. You're absolutely so right. So don't stretch, officer. test my indulgence here and don't give me a big list of all the organisations you want on the record. I, I certainly won't, President. No, officer. you won't. At this time of year, when the focus is on goodwill to all men and women, Scottish Water need to look again at their misguided plans that will punish people simply for their living circumstances. Thank you, President. Thank Officer. you very much. And I see you found your car and I found my glasses, so things are improving. I now call James Kelly to be followed by John Scott. Mr Kelly, please. Th thank you very much, Deputy President Officer. Can I start by paying tribute to my colleague, Jackie Bailey, in securing this debate and bringing this very relevant motion to the Chamber this, this evening. Uh, Jackie has a formidable record uh, as a campaigner in bringing issues of substance uh, and issues that matter uh, to the Scottish Parliament Chamber and this uh, issue in relation to the Scottish Water Discount for single persons is no different from that. I think you just need to look at the extent of the issue. Uh, it affects nearly uh, a million people and the break, breakdown geographically shows that it affects 138,000 people in Glasgow and 57,000 in South Lanarkshire. Uh, and I've no doubt that across Rutherglen, Cambus Lang and Blantyre, uh, there are many people who will be concerned about these proposals that have been put forward in the Scottish Government consultation document. Aid Scotland are right to highlight the impact on uh, pensioners and we know that over the, the next 25 years that, that, that uh, the impact of that is going to grow by 50%. And I think it's relevant, it comes, the debate comes at this time of year because we're also focusing on fuel poverty. And you know, a quarter of people in Scotland suffer from fuel poverty and a half of those are older. So a lot of the issue in, in relation to a single person discount affects older people. Uh, from that point of view, I think the, the policy intent 
that the Scottish Government are pursuing here is one that's wrong. Um, first of all, it's unfair. It's, uh, if this was to be successful in terms of a reduction or a removal, it would affect nearly a million people and it would affect uh, a lot of uh, pensioners. I think the second thing is that there seems to be a, an argument about trying to shift to the council ta tax reduction element of the water charge. And there's a very poor uptake on that. So uh, that, you know, that wouldn't have the same impact in terms of trying to, to help people. So there are unintended consequences in relation to this. Uh, I suspect that what's behind it is that as the Scottish Government, you know, continue to pursue uh, other options to fill the black holes in their budget, not just this year, but in future years, they're looking at other fundraising options. And nobody should be surprised at that. When you look at the publication of last week's draft budget, just on local councils a, a, alone, you've got a, a, a decrease of £319 million pounds in real terms. Um, obviously, there are, there, there are clear issues there. Um, so, I think this is a very relevant issue that Jackie Bailey is bringing to the Chamber and in looking at the consultation uh, I'd say to Mr Dornan it, it lists very clearly what the, the different exemptions are currently and it goes on to say ministers consider there is a strong case for reducing or removing these discounts. Not just a case, a strong case. So it shows you the, the way the government's thinking on this. They clearly know that it's controversial if they're going to publish the results of the consultation on uh, Friday um, when most people are heading off on the Christmas break. And I think uh, I would agree with Jackie Bailey in the sense that the government have to rethink on this if they've got a direction of travel in terms of reducing or getting rid of this discount. Uh, let's think again. I think this, has been, this debate has been rel very relevant in bringing the issue to the chamber. Uh, I hope the minister is constructive in responding to this because uh, this would have a detrimental effect on over nearly a million Scots, particularly a lot of pensioners, uh, and I think we need to rethink how we go forward on this issue. Thank you very much, Mr Kelly. And I call John Scott, last speaker in the open debate. Mr Scott, please. Well, thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And can I begin by declaring an interest as the owner of a dormant water distribution company? Can I also congratulate Jackie Bailey on bringing forward this motion today which questions Scottish Water's intention, or indeed the Scottish Government's intention, to remove the 25% single occupancy discount for those living alone. Certainly the proposed proposal to reduce this 25% discount to 10% will be a significant blow to the ever-growing number of people living on their own in Scotland and will not bring Christmas cheer to the many hundreds of thousands of people who will be affected by this proposal if the Scottish Government have their way. Of course, it's not just those living alone who will be affected by this, but particularly those single people on low and fixed incomes, as well as the elderly, who will feel most upset if the Scottish Government reduces this discount. In addition, from information provided by Age Concern and used by others, it appears that over the next 25 years, the number of older people living alone in Scotland is set to rise by almost 50%, and the Scottish Government's proposals would see all of these people facing increased council taxes as a result of increased water rates. So, presiding officer, we know that the Scottish Government is consulting in proposals on how to change the charging structure to Scottish water customers, and we are also aware of the growing need to fund new infrastructure projects in Scotland as Victorian water distribution and sewerage systems become obsolete and are simply overwhelmed by a lack of capacity and higher rainfall from climate change. But, presiding officer, this renewal must not be undertaken at the expense of pensioners or single people or the least well-off in our country. Desperately needed new infrastructure in Prestwick, in my constituency, for example, where frequent external sewer flooding is now a regular occurrence, must not be funded in this way. And rebuilding the sewerage network to deliver new external sewerage capacity must be delivered from charging and taxing those better able to afford such costs, and I hope the Scottish Government, through Scottish Water, will soon create this new infrastructure so desperately needed in Prestwick without feeling the need to put their hands in the pockets of those least able to afford it. Returning now to water rates and new charging structures, water rates are just one of the many costs that disproportionately affect people living on their own, 
with currently only a 25% reduction being in place. And it is important for government to remember that 40% of people eligible for pension credits do not claim them. Other benefits to which many of our proud but often lonely elderly are entitled are also unclaimed. And I'm always happy to ask our ever helpful South Ayrshire Council and the DWP in air to organise a benefits check for any of my constituents just in case they are missing out on benefits to which they are properly entitled. So, presiding officer, my congratulations uh, to Jackie Bailey in securing and promoting this lively debate on this important issue this evening. Scottish Conservatives certainly agree with her motion this evening, the last member's business debate before Christmas, and we would urge the Scottish Government, in the spirit of Christmas, to listen to Jackie Bailey and the many contributions to this debate today before reducing discounts and water rates for single people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Scott. And I call Rosanna Cunningham to close the Government Cabinet Secretary, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I need to do, restate at the outset that this is a debate about a consultation about which no decision has yet been made. The consultation dealt with a number of issues, one of which was the current discounting system and whether it could be better focused on those most in need. Water charges in Scotland remain among the lowest in the UK, and we offer a series of discounts, exemptions and reductions to classes of customers facing certain circumstances which are just not available elsewhere. This is a source of pride and shows the merits of our public sector ownership. But can we be clear? These discounts and exemptions are not government grants or subsidies, they are paid for by other household customers. And the present range of discounts cost them £146 million, equivalent to nearly £63 on the average bill. It is not unreasonable to ask whether the current system helps those who have most difficulty paying. That is what we set out to consider and what led us to put this proposal in the consultation. We did this in close discussion with Citizens Advice Scotland and in the light of research undertaken by them. Research undertaken by Fraser of Allender on behalf of them and published by their website, uh, on their website has estimated that 12% of households in Scotland spend more than 3% of their weekly income on water and sewerage charges. That's 297,000 households who could be said to face affordability issues. The research noted that not all single occupant households do face affordability issues. Well, indeed not. As John Mason pointed out, there may be a fair number of MSPs in that category themselves. Single person household does not equal inability to pay. The research by Fraser of Allender further concluded that households in receipt of council tax reduction are the most likely to face affordability issues. The consultation was about whether there was a way to better support those who are most vulnerable. I'm surprised that anyone would think that this is not a reasonable question to ask. <laughs> Presiding officer, as I've indicated, we worked with Citizens Advice Scotland. Yes, of course. Jackie Bailey. I don't think anybody is disputing that we would actually want to see those who have the very least gain more by way of discount. But it's the method by which you choose to do that is removing it from others who actually can't afford to have that discount taken away from them. Cabinet Secretary. Well, I made the comment about single person households being a status that isn't actually related to affordability. I've indicated we worked with Citizens Advice Scotland. Members might wish to have a look at their report published in September titled Charting a New Course, a study in developing affordability policy for water and sewerage charges. The results of the consultation have been analysed and are now online. People will therefore be able to see who did and who did not lodge a submission to the consultation. Further research, consultation and engagement with the potentially affected demographics and relevant interest groups will be undertaken prior to making any decision. But I need to reiterate, no decision has been made. Thank you very much. Uh, that concludes the debate and I close this meeting. <laughs>